Mirrorless cameras are the future. They're smaller, shoot faster, and look better, and currently are the best way to do video of any kind. So in this video, I'm going to show you the best mirrorless cameras out there, whether you're just curious about new cameras or looking to get serious. Also, if you want the best pricing and the most up-to-date pricing on any of the cameras that we talk about today, then I highly recommend checking out the links in the description down below for the best pricing and the most up-to-date pricing, so make sure to check that out. All right, guys, so the first camera on this list is the ZV-E10, which is, in my opinion, the perfect beginner camera out there. And it's also the best social media camera you can get today. The ZV-E10 has a really simple design philosophy. It's one button to switch between photo, video, and slow motion, and two separate record buttons for photo shutter and video record. The design is dead simple and gets rid of all the clutter that you normally see on cameras. But also, it has one really unique feature. It's a one-click button to actually add more blur to your background to get more of that bokeh and that pro camera look. And the ZV-E10 also allows you to wirelessly transfer your photos and videos straight from the camera to your phone to edit and post on social media. And one thing that I love about this camera is the fact that it has a compound internal mic. It's actually three mics that work as one to give you a stellar, onboard microphone. It's almost as good as an external microphone, but by not having to put an external microphone on your camera, not only are you going to save cash, but also you're going to be able to keep your camera much smaller, which is a big plus if you plan to vlog with this camera. The ZV-E10 is quite literally an all-in-one camera package. Although, the ZV-E10 is a very small and compact camera that's very easy to travel with. However, small camera definitely means small batteries. If you're going to be using this camera all throughout the day, I definitely recommend picking up a couple of spare batteries. However, they're pretty cheap on Amazon for about $15 to $20 for a two-pack. One of the reasons that the ZV-E10 is such a popular camera amongst any type of user is the fact that it does not only high resolution video, but also high resolution photo. The ZV-E10 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is plenty of resolution for both pro use and casual use. It can shoot raw photos at 10 frames per second. Now this is easily fast enough for any kind of fast moving subject, lifestyle photos, or even sports photography. And because this camera shoots raw photos, you can do some pretty heavy duty editing. But what about the video? This camera does shoot 4K up to 30 frames per second and Full HD up to 120 frames per second for that juicy slow motion goodness. And on top of that, it also has cinema profiles built right in for heavy color grading. This camera does shoot 8-bit 420 color, so something to be aware of. But if you're a video creator, a social media user, or just a casual user, have no fear, there's still plenty of horsepower in this camera. But before I forget, let's talk about autofocus in the ZV-E10. It's really good at tracking faces and objects, which makes vlogging and handheld shooting a breeze. However, the one thing that I think some of you guys might have an issue with is the Sony colors in this camera. The colors aren't particularly vibrant, and I always find I need to push the skin tones a bit towards orange and red but it is a pretty simple fix when you're editing your photos and videos. And this isn't really something that should stop you from picking up the ZV-E10. It's just something to be aware of. And personally, I don't think you can go wrong with the ZV-E10. This is a great camera if this is maybe your first camera. This is a phenomenal camera for someone that's focused mainly on social media. The simplified design is going to make your life a whole lot easier and having high resolution photos and high resolution video is going to allow you to create exactly what you want with a lot less issue. However, if you're someone that's looking to get serious, you might feel a bit hampered by the 8-bit color and the dull in-camera colors. For you guys, I actually recommend the next camera on our list, which is the Fuji X-S10. The Fuji X-S10, without a doubt, is one of the most unique looking cameras out there. But not only that, it's also a great budget camera for professional users. The Fuji X-S10 has film emulation filters built right in that emulate the look of vintage film. Now this feature is perfect for someone who wants a unique look to their photos and videos. But not only that, this feature is going to save you a ton of time and energy when it comes to color grading your photos and videos for professional use. It's really nice to just have something that looks good right in camera and be able to send it out to a client right away. And if you're new to cameras, this is kind of like cheating because you don't really know yourself yet, but you're going to get really good looking images. Now, what makes the color so interesting in the Fuji X-S10 is not just the film emulation, but also the horsepower behind the color science. The Fuji X-S10 does 10-bit color at a 200 megabit data rate with F-Log. You can quite literally get this camera to look like anything, and if you're someone that wants to go for that more cinematic look, this camera is only going to help you get there faster. 
Now, I know I've talked about color science with the Fuji X-S10 quite a bit, so let's talk about frame rates and what this camera can actually shoot. Now, video is where this camera gets really interesting. It does 4K up to 30 frames per second. Sadly, there's no 4K at 60. For that, you have to move up to the Fuji X-T4, which is a little bit more expensive. But the X-S10 has some truly mind-blowing slow motion modes. It shoots full HD at both 120 all the way to 240 frames per second in full HD. That is over 10 times slow motion. It's absolutely insane. This is a dream come true for any kind of creative shooter, for product commercials, epic fashion slow-mo, or music video. The Fuji X-S10 delivers blazing fast photos. It gives you a ridiculous 20 frames per second using the electronic shutter mode. Now, if you've been shooting for a while, you know what an insane shooting speed that is. This camera can literally do it all. However, one thing to note, to get 20 frames per second, you have to shoot in electronic shutter mode, which has a very tiny crop of 1.25. This is a super small crop that you most likely will never notice. But if you want the full sensor, it only does eight frames per second in normal mechanical shutter mode. But the crop on this camera really shouldn't stop you from picking it up. And once again, you get all of this with stellar Fuji colors. However, the Fuji X-S10 is really not a perfect camera because there is one place I am just not impressed with this camera, and that is the autofocus. It does a great job in single focus mode, but when it comes to tracking with autofocus, the hitbox is a bit slow and it doesn't track nearly as fast as a Sony or Canon camera. Now the autofocus isn't terrible, I'd still give it a 7 out of 10, but I realize the autofocus alone will probably stop a lot of you guys from coming over from Sony or Canon. In my opinion, it really shouldn't. I think the colors and the features in this camera are super worth it, even if you get slightly slow autofocus. And one thing that I definitely want to talk about is the design of the Fuji X-S10. It looks pretty vanilla to be honest, it abandons most of the Fuji vintage look that most of their cameras have. It kind of takes the best parts of the Canon R series and the best parts of the Sony A6000 series. It puts it into one camera, but the internals are a Fuji camera. You get Fuji color science, you get Fuji frame rates, but it feels and handles kind of like a Canon or Sony which I think is a really good thing if you're thinking of coming into this camera from a Canon or Sony, you won't really miss much. And the Fuji X-S10 also has in-body stabilization for smooth handheld shooting. I recommend this camera to anyone who's a casual shooter, a creative shooter, or a professional shooter because you're going to get phenomenal in-camera colors with the Fuji Color Science. The body and design is pretty familiar, so you're not really going to miss a beat. And the frame rates on this camera are ridiculous. The only thing you're really sacrificing is a little bit on the autofocus front. But what if you don't want to make any sacrifices in color, slow motion, frame rates? What if you want it all? Well, let me introduce you to the Sony a7S III, the best mirrorless camera on the market right now. The a7S III is really geared towards professionals looking to shoot high-end projects like commercials, music videos, or any kind of cinematic content. But what makes the a7S III unique is that you can do all of this without completely wrecking your finances or your life on a super expensive camera. The a7S III is also a great camera deal. The first thing that you have to love about the a7S III is the ridiculously fast shooting rates. In photo mode, it only shoots at 10 frames per second, but it has an insane frame buffer of a thousand photos. You can quite literally shoot 10 frames per second for an hour straight and this camera will not stop. However, it is a 12 megapixel sensor and I think most photographers would probably want a little more resolution, but that's okay because the a7S III is really a video first camera and it has one of the coolest video features out there and that is 4K at 120 frames per second and it does this without cropping the sensor. 4K at 120 frames per second with no crop is a feature that a lot of filmmakers have been waiting their whole life to have in a consumer level camera. Plus, if you're a slow motion nerd like me, this camera also does full HD up to 240 frames per second. This camera is a dream for someone who wants to shoot a lot of slow motion. Now, something that I have to mention, there is a competing camera, the Canon R5, which also does 4K at 120, and it has better colors, but the camera has severe heating issues, and it's not a camera that I'm really recommending to most people right now. Now, 4K at 120 isn't the only thing that makes the a7S III special. What I really care about in a camera are the colors and the data rates for video, so I can create whatever I want. I want my camera to be as flexible as possible. Although, I still love the Fuji colors. The a7S III has 10-bit color. You can easily manipulate your colors to look cinematic, commercial, more like a music video without any loss of image quality. 
Plus this camera also has 12-bit RAW using an external encoder. So if you guys wanna use something like the Atomus 5, the Atomus Ninja to get raw video out of this camera, that's also something you can do and definitely something that's probably pretty attractive to most professionals. And you have to admit, that's a lot of horsepower in a small $3,500 camera. However, I think the biggest reason that most people should probably think about the a7S III is the low light and the autofocus. The a7S III line has always been famous for its low light performance, but on this camera, it takes it to a whole new level. The a7S III actually has a native ISO of 640 and 12,800, which is actually a really nice improvement because the previous a7S models actually needed you to have your camera at 3,200 ISO or 1,600 ISO to record S-Log. And I'm happy to say the 12,800 ISO looks just as clean as a 640. And as for the autofocus, it's still pretty stellar when it comes to tracking autofocus. It's really accurate. It's quick to recover if it ever misses a shot. You can easily put this camera on a gimbal and just forget about it. The autofocus does a really good job tracking your subject. And I wish there was more I could say about it, but all you really need to know is the autofocus just works. On top of that, the a7S III does have in-body stabilization, but it also has software stabilization using the Sony Catalyst software. So for the most part, I feel like the a7S III pretty much wins the camera war when it comes to best mirrorless camera. It absolutely crushes the competition for the Canon R5 and the R6. I actually prefer Canon cameras in terms of menus, physical bodies, and color science. But the a7S III gives you so much more horsepower that it's hard to argue. Plus, it's slightly cheaper. But at the end of the day, you can spend all the money you want on a camera, but if you don't know how to properly use it, you'll never really get the results that you want. So if you want to start improving your photos and videos within the next seven days, make sure to check out a free training in the link down below. This is my seven simple secrets that will show you how to get dramatically better photos and videos within the next seven days. Once again, this is a completely free training, so make sure to check it out in the description down below.